So let's start with prayer for our evening, and then the choir is going to sing for us. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much um, for United Christian Academy. Thank you for a place where students can come and learn so many different subjects, God, and so many different skills, um, but most importantly, can learn them in an environment where your name is praised, God. Thank you for the staff here. Thank you for the parents here. Thank you for the friends and family members. Thank you for every person in this room, God, for the part that each one plays in the success of this school, Lord. We are united, all of us, Lord, around you, and I thank you for a unity that only you can bring. And I pray that that blessing on this campus and on each person in this room, Lord, uh, for the rest of this year. I thank you, God, for being a God who hears our prayers and who cares so deeply and passionately about us. Thank you for a fun evening tonight to just get to celebrate the good things that you are doing. In your name, amen.
Every day, we're swarmed with headlines of crimes and tragedies all around us. Our own neighborhoods struck by darkness. We begin with breaking news as we come on the air in the West tonight, a wildfire burning in San Bernardino County, east of Los Angeles. We're following breaking news out of Los Angeles where a gunman is barricaded inside a Trader Joe's grocery store, possibly with hostages, an unknown number of people according to the LAPD. California governor now declaring a state of emergency. But in a world of darkness, there's great opportunity. An opportunity to be bold. Being bold means taking charge, standing out. It means being a light for others in our community. And tonight, we challenge you to be bold as we take a look at some UCA students and alumni who have made their own choice to be bold. My name is Brittany Prue, and I graduated in 2008. I've been raised in two different homes growing up, and that has highly contributed to where I am today. And I went to private Christian school my whole life. UCA contributed highly to that. Um, they motivated me, encouraged me, and that um, helped me go on to further education. So I met my husband in high school at UCA, and we ended up furthering our education, both doing psychology and doing our bachelor's and our master's. Um, and now we both thoroughly enjoy working with children and adolescents and teens. In this room, I do a lot of play. I have puppets behind me, which helps a lot with social socialization and just learning how to communicate and even providing a space where a kid or a teen can yell if they want to yell. What do you got to get out that's stuck inside of you and how can we work through that in this space so then maybe when you're out at school you know you're not getting in trouble as much or you're able to communicate oh I feel really sad today and just it's a space it's a safe space it's where kids can be themselves and they don't have to feel judged by an adult which I think a lot of the times kids do feel judged and confused and don't know, really know how to share or feel safe to share, but here they can share. I am thankful for what I have experienced at UCA 15 years ago. It's where I grew up, it's where I gained a lot of my insight and my growth. Um, I love being able to give back to an organization that I firmly believe in, and now I'm so thankful that God is using me in a way where I can be a part of that change and a part of helping somebody else I, I love that UCA is being proactive with resources that could possibly help change the whole dynamic of the way students relate to one another and the way they, they grow throughout their time at UCA. My name is Sophia Diaz and I'm in eighth grade here at UCA. When I first became a Christian, um, it was around the third or fourth grade because that was in my Bible class when it was a lot more than just going through the workbooks, but it was really learning and registering in my mind that someone died such a painful death to save my life, to make me free of sin. This really meant something to me because in my heart I really appreciated it. Um, I would not be living the life that I'm living today, living for the Lord. UCA has really impacted me and helped shape me because beforehand, you know, even though I was still little, I was only in kindergarten and didn't know much about the Lord. But now, growing up and under this atmosphere and the environment with such friendly people and nice people who I know care for me, it's just helped me to grow 
for love for people and love for the Lord, just loving to talk and communicate and do things like this. Um, I have been able to be there for others when they were in need of help. Like for example, I have a friend who used to come here, but they no longer go here. And she went through um, a really heartbreaking time where her great aunt passed away. And she was just, her whole family was really impacted by that because she, like me, had a very close relationship with her family. She spent so much time in the hospital and I know that I was just there and I allowed her to feel hopeful for what was going to happen. I just wanted her to know that when she's around me, she can express how she felt. And so I just told her that prayer was one of the main things that she can do to really just not only be confident of what's going to happen with her aunt, but she can come closer to the Lord and build a relationship where they can talk all the time. You would never want to go through things alone. I know that people who may act tough on the outside are really soft on the inside, and I think without even a mom or dad or just a friend to talk to here and there, just to text, maybe while you're at work or even just at school, that I can just be a helping hand and hang out with them for the day, hang out with them forever, maybe build a friendship with them and just help them stay strong and ask them if they're praying because to me prayer is such a strong thing that will help us get through many, many things. So for them to have that relationship with God and anyone in the world through prayer, I know that things will get better. Things will always get better. Thank you. Um, Acts 4.31 says, And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know.
so my name is Sarah and um, this is my husband Alex. Uh, we've been married for about five years. I started going to UCA in third grade and then I stayed there all the way until I graduated high school. I think what set UCA apart was um, the teachers and the staff that they chose to hire. They were reachable, you know what I mean? So you could talk to them about anything, even about life, even if it wasn't at school. Again, one of the defining things of UCA is that it was, it wasn't just like biblical based, but it was more like, how do you practice that? I think they really um, prepared us well how to enter the world as Christians. Like, how do you transform the world but not be transformed by it? So I think that that was um, one of the things that they really impressed upon us. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm adopted, so um, I, my adopted family, I was the youngest of four. Yeah, Child Protective Services uh, came um, and took us away because we were just living in some crazy conditions and um, super unhealthy, we were being neglected, abused. So I was able to be adopted out um, to the family um, that I call my real family now uh, with my older sister. His foster journey was definitely the seed of why we wanted to do it because even from the time we were dating, he, he told me, he was like, this is something I want to do because I want to do for a child what, you know, someone what was for given me. for me. So it's super well known that foster care is a very broken system and there's just a lot of factors that are out of everyone's control. But I think what God actually calls us into is to enter into the brokenness of the world and not to necessarily run away from it. So yeah, Tori, uh, she came from Ontario. She's just this vibrant, go-lucky little girl, you know, um, and who wants to be a part of everything. And, uh, you know, Sarah and I had no idea, you know, what to expect with the whole foster care system. And, and we have no biological children of our own, yeah. so we, have, we had no parenting experience when she came. Yeah, we were just them. like, cool, let's, you know, and most like every parent, you never know what you're going to get, you know, but this, we're like, okay, now you have a three and a half year old girl, you know, coming up your driveway, you're like, all right, you know. You know, people are like, you know, like, how how can you do it? How can you, you know, you know, take this child in and then be fearful that it may be taken away from you? And you know, we're just, we're just trusting God, you know. And and over the two years, we've grown to just love her and um, love on her, and provide anything that we can for her to make sure that you know that her life um, can be everything that she's wanted it to be, you know. And Even if she leaves tomorrow, that we would have laid a foundation for her mm -hmm. um, in Christianity. I think for us, the boldness was unintentional, um, but I think where it really came from, surrendering what God wanted for us and wanted for our lives and just um, learning to actively wait on that. And I think one of the byproducts of that was boldness. Uh, my name is Brendan Swart and I'm a senior. Uh, I started coming to UCA when I was a freshman. But I wouldn't say I really became a Christian until I got into high school and started learning more about who God really is, um, just through teachers and through the environment around me here at the school. A little bit is just learning in um, Bible classes, evidence for why we believe, why like we believe what we believe. Um, actually knowing practical and like actual hard evidence, not just, you know, knowing that, yeah, this is true, but knowing, hey, like, if I know how to protect my faith now, I know why I believe these things. I know, like, the reasons behind it. I know the evidence, um, scientific, historical. I think that really, like, cemented it for me. I think I chose to go on a mission trip at first just to do something to get out of my comfort zone. You know, it was something I was, like, interested in, but I didn't really know how, how much I would be into it. So I just thought, you know, I should try it, you know? And go like serve others to see what that is like, get out of my comfort zone. Sacrificing what's comfortable to myself um, to give someone else either comfort or just happiness, whatever it is, to just give them what they need at the expense of my own self. I think that's been the most like impactful thing. Um, I think God uses me to be bold and he you know, calls me to do things that, yeah, I'm not always comfortable with, whether it's, you know, going on a mission trip, something as like extreme as that, or just doing something as simple as like, you see someone sitting alone going to like sit with them and talk with them for a little bit. You know, I think even just things like that, God calls us to be bold and um, it's just taking that step out of our comfort zone. Yeah, I think that's how God's call calling me to be bold. 
So for the two uh, Mexicali trips that I've been on, um, we go down there, we do like a vacation Bible school, a VBS down there for the kids kids at the church or in the local like community. We partner with the church down there. Um, and we go do a VBS for them. And we, it's really cool because we get to create all the lessons and everything. Going to Guatemala was really cool. We get to go down there and just travel the country and then we get to spend some time at the uh, orphanage, Ahikam for a few days and uh, just serve in any way they need. Um, we get to play with the kids, just spend a lot of time with them and be there with them and show these, uh, you know, these orphan kids just some love because they don't get a lot of that. Uh, I think the impact that we get to have is going down there is just being able to be like a light in their lives, you know. I think it's something that they will remember, you know, I think they'll remember that when these people came from another country, you know, just to be there with them for a few days you know, to take time and hang out with them and show them love. You know, been, these kids have been abandoned. It's not their first, you know, instinct. A lot of them didn't experience a lot of love early on in their life. So I think just showing them that God's love through that um, is really, like, impactful for them. And on, on the flip side, even for us as we go, for me, it is, like, really impactful seeing that. Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. Psalm 82, 3 through 4.
My name is Dustin Bilton and I graduated in the year 2000. So I started attending UCA in 1998. I was involved in ASB, I was the class representative I think my sophomore year and then I went to be the vice president and then I was the ASB president in 99 and 2000 and if you guys still have prom here, well you're welcome. So I lead a team of seven regional managers that are spread out across 17 states. So I travel a lot, more than I want, um, to help give Mayo Clinic medicine and expertise and knowledge to the hospitals across the western part of the country. If you're very sick and you go to the hospital, you're gonna probably run some laboratory tests. But the hospital won't be able to run all of them, especially if it's a very rare, rare disorder. So they have to send that testing out somewhere to be performed. And Mayo Clinic is one of a very few number of places that will run that test and communicate back that result. UCA gave me a second opportunity to define who I was gonna be. I mean, I had a class size of 25. I think the high school total at the time was about 130. But to have, to have that small class size with teachers that you can share your testimony, things that were going on outside of school, I, I don't think you'd get that often in the public, um, in the public school system. Um, just knowing that Jesus was like foundational to everybody, um, at least all the faculty and, you know, a lot of the student body. So yeah, I think, you know, being a part of um, student body gave me a chance to build my confidence give me a chance to lead other people, share a vision, <clears throat> champion others to a cause. So once I went to Cal Poly and ultimately to, to USC and in the work field, I knew, I knew how to cheerlead and how to champion others and gather around folks and make a difference. And I would end up taking those leadership skills that the teachers, the faculty at the time, and some of the other students just really infused in me. My name is Leah Kalaki and I am in Miss Middlebrook's class. My favorite things at UCA are my um, friends and my teachers and the people who take care of me. Six months ago, I had a lung affection and they had to do surgery to me and all this stuff and I had to stay there for a long time. Sometimes I um, am kind of nervous when I go to the hospital. I'm like nervous because I'm gonna get a shot really soon or um, they're gonna rip tape off of sensitive skin on me. <laughs> In first grade, I um, went to the hospital and um, I was sleeping and when I woke up, there was this little, um, there was this little Easter doggy. I didn't even know, I was surprised they gave me that. <laughs> um, it made me feel really good. One time when I was in the hospital, um, these ladies came in and they gave me um, a toy and a really soft blanket. This soft blanket that I'm on right now. Um, how I am being bold is that um, I came up with this idea and I am um, giving love to the world by um, giving stuff away to the kids in the hospital. Little puppets. We have a lot. <laughs> we have a lot of them. I thought it would be really good to do and I just really liked giving out to the nurses and my nurses and my doctors. So I thought I could um, do the same for the kids in the hospital. So come on, are you ready to be bold with us? United, we are bold. Be bold. 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 Be bold with us.
3 through 4. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. So if you could stand up, clap, sing along with us, you know this is the time to worship God and to worship the one who made us full. Shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns. I hope you were as moved by those stories and experiences from our alumni and our students as I was. I uh, don't usually cry. That's a joke. Uh, I'm a crier. But I was getting a little uh, emotional over there. Uh, and actually, two of our featured alumni are here tonight. Um, so Sarah and Dustin, if you guys can just kind of wave where you are. They're kind of right next to each other, actually. Uh, Thank you guys so much for being here and sharing your story with us. Sarah and I got to talk for a second in the back, and she was telling me, like, oh, I graduated 10 years ago. And I was like, oh, 
Okay, well, I guess no one's going to believe I'm 25 anymore if I taught her 11 years ago when she was a junior. I guess that, just, uh, that ship has sailed. Uh, but uh, she's like, do you remember me? I'm like, of course I remember you. Uh, the family we have here, that's what I just keep hearing all these things. The family that is here at ECA, it's like, of course I remember you, Sarah. You're one of my kids. Uh, I just have a bunch of, I'm 33 and I have a bunch of 25-year-old kids. Uh, it's okay. Um, but Sarah, your video, thank you so much for sharing that. That got me a little uh, emotional. And thank you for the amazing things that you and your family are doing. And so now, when we were talking about this night and the great things that our alumni are doing and our students are doing, we thought, like, wow, we are connected to so many amazing organizations that we're working with and partnering with um, to be united and to be bold in our community. And so we wanted to take just a second or two or 11 minutes, I think they gave me, um, to recognize those um, partners, some of our partners. We have a lot more. Some couldn't be here tonight. Uh, but we wanted to recognize some of those tonight. So when I call your name... Please come up here. We have a certificate for you, and I just want to say thank you. You can come stand up here, and then we'll all wait up here until the end, and then we'll take a picture, right? And some students are going to hand you something. So our first place that we partner with is Amy's Farm, and Farmer Randy Beckendam is here representing Amy's Farm. <laughs> Amy's Farm's a real working farm, uh, and I should know. I used to work there, actually, with Randy. Uh, and UCA students have literally got to get their hands dirty and work on the farm uh, and help the community in that way, um, harvesting vegetables and fruits and pulling weeds and cleaning up and all kinds of great stuff. Our next organization is City of Hope, and we have Kathy Ramirez and Christina Curiel here. Yes, maybe, hopefully. Do we? Okay, well, City of Hope is a leading research and treatment center for cancer, diabetes, and other life-threatening diseases. Uh, we here personally um, do a blood drive with them that we tell the kids, like, this is so amazing. You get to sit down for an hour and literally do nothing except let the blood drain from you. Uh, and then you get to save hundreds of lives, and that's so cool. Uh, our next organization is Feeding America Riverside, and we have Clara Vanderpool and Lori Butler here as representatives. Woo-hoo! There they are, come back. Feeding America distributes nearly 2.5 million pounds of food per month and partners with over 400 local nonprofit agencies. Our students have helped sort, package, and weigh food at the distribution center, which is essential if it's going to reach those who need it most. Thank you guys for partnering with us. We have the Pomona Valley Habitat for Humanity, and we have Morgan Sternquist here representing them. Seeking to put God's love into action, Habitat for Humanity brings people together to build homes, communities, and hope. UCA students loved helping with the exterior painting and refurbishing of homes that Habitat have provided for low-income residents in the West Inland Empire. Thank you for that. Um, we have the Inland Empire United Way, and we have Shirley Driz and... Sorry, there was no way I could memorize all these. Uh, Jacqueline Espy here to represent them. Thank you, guys. The United Way is an organization that is committed to improving the lives and futures of children and families in need in our community. UCA students have volunteered with United Way's Kids Pack to help feed hungry children and with the school's tools program, which is a student and teacher resource that helps equip students for success. Thank you for that. We've also partnered with Laundry Love Pomona, and we have Julie McCurdy, Kathy Windsor, and Ahana Nosu here to represent them. Laundry Love. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Laundry Love Pomona is part of a national movement to build connection and community by reaching out to those who live on the edges. UCA students have joined the movement and gather once a month with quarters and laundry detergent and dryer sheets and often dinner and or care bags at a local laundromat and offer their time, treasures, and attention to those who find their own resources in short supply at the end of the month. Thank you for your partnership. We have also partnered with the Mary Vagel Nature Center and we have Jordan Gionet here as representing them. Yes, good. 
Located in Fontana at the foothill of Harupa Hills, the Mary Vagel Nature Center provides a variety of wildlife education programs to the community, along with exploratory sessions about the local plants, animals, and earth soil. Our students have volunteered there. I have also volunteered there uh, at the Nature Center by helping with the landscaping and the overall maintenance of the Nature Center. Next, we have Operation Christmas Child, and here we have Sheila Anderson, Lizanne Gray, Yvette Lama, and Sam Lama. Come on up. <laughs> Operation Christmas Child's shoebox gifts lead to evangelism, discipleship, and the multiplication of believers in churches. Since 1993, Operation Christmas Child has delivered gift-filled shoeboxes to over 146 million children in more than 100 countries. And what has become one of our favorite traditions each year, our junior high students head down to Operation Christmas Child Processing Center in Fullerton to help sort and stuff boxes as they make their way to children all over the world. We also partner with the Rancho Cucamonga Fire Station 174 for their toy drive. And we have Captain Rick Snodder here to represent them. In our elementary school, each class adopts a community leader or service for the year. The Rancho Cucamonga Fire Station is one of those community services that we adopt every year. The fire district and the Rancho Cucamonga Professional Firefighters Association participate in the Spark of Love annual holiday toy drive, and Captain Rick Snodder has been an incredible resource for our students to get more involved. Thank you. Now we have the Rotary Club of Claremont, and we have Celeste Kelly, Megan Ryan, and that's it. Uh, <laughs> Come on up. Sorry, I thought there was more continued on the next page. You can look at these beautiful people instead of me. I'll come down. Uh, um, we interact with, our Interact is Rotary International Services Club for young people ages 12 to 18. Interact clubs are sponsored by individual Rotary clubs. And last year, UCA students were sponsored by Claremont Sunrise Rotary to bring Interact to UCA junior high students. They served alongside fellow Rotarians to assemble over 600 prosthetic arms, volunteered at their turkey trot run and fundraiser, and this year will also participate in their leadership training program. Thank you. Representing the Second District Youth Council, we have Supervisor Janice Rutherford. The Second District Youth Council is a group of engaged, motivated high school students that serve as an advisory board of the San Bernardino County Second District Supervisor Janice Rutherford. With several of our own UCA students having served on the Youth Council, they have helped identify youth-related issues and have participated in volunteer activities throughout the Second District. Next, we have the WaterWise Community Center, and we have Becky Rittenberg and Omani Abu here to represent them. <laughs> or maybe not, but I can tell you all about it because this is actually one I go to every year. So this is what our seniors do for their Earth Day. Uh, we go and teach kids about how to be water wise, how to save the environment. And so our students actually lead presentations on that to public elementary schools uh, around the community in Montclair. And I want to say, this is not on this, I'm going, I'm going rogue. I want to say that when we go every year, one of the best things that I hear is how amazing our students are. And it is such a testimony to Jesus, most importantly, when when we started partnering, it was us and three public high schools that partnered, Montclair High School, Chafee High School, and a bunch. Um, and as we have gone more and more, they have not asked the public high schools to go and just asked us to bring more students. Because like your kids are something different. They're polite and respectful. They get in there and get down with the kids and they're just such a joy to be around. And we all get to say where that joy comes from. Right? Uh, yay for Jesus, that's most important. And next we have Ahikam's Children Home, and we have Mr. Wayne Randolph, a former staff member, here representing that. See that family we're talking about? Mr. Randolph used to work here at United Christian. Uh, located in the rural town 
a rural town in Guatemala. I don't know which right now. Ahikam Children's Home houses over 50 orphan children from ages 1 to 18, some of whom have also suffered from physical or mental disabilities. Directed by Papa Louise and Mama Kone, Ahikam is committed to sharing the love of Christ with children who have been abandoned or displaced because of violence. Ahikam provides a safe environment for children to grow in the Lord and break the cycle of violence and poverty. With the leadership and support of Mr. Randolph, UCA students have had a wide range of opportunities to get involved, whether it's through fundraisers such as our annual Guatemala coin drive or through missions trips to Ahikam, actually going to Guatemala. Each summer, our students have really developed a passion for serving, supporting, and loving children in this home. Let's give a big hand for that. That's amazing. Take, I'll step down and let's take a, give, look at this, look at how our investment, this is what's so cool. Sorry, I'm getting really close to you guys over here. Uh, look at how our investment here in these kids, just in these kids here, this small, tiny private school on this wonderful, abundant living property, how this group of kids goes out and affects millions of people. In the United States, I'm getting I'm a little emotional up here. Uh, in the United States, uh, in Guatemala, in Los Angeles, in New York, in Montclair. Like, it's just fantastic to see God reaching through these kids out into our whole entire nation, into our whole entire world. So let's give a big hand for our community partners up here. And Henry's getting some picture. Also, I think this will be a cool picture moment. Student servers, if you have served in, in, with any of these organizations or the ones that I mentioned, come on up and join these guys here uh, for a cool picture. And if you're in the choir here, why don't you just raise your hand if you've partnered with some of these organizations, and you'll get to see how we have so many students who participate in this. And Henry will get a quick photo op. Okay, you might want to okay. squish down. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's it. That's it. That's it. There we go. Let's give a big hand to that, our students serving in this community. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. I almost feel like I just mic drop right now because that is so amazing to me. Thank you guys so much. You can have a seat. Uh, yes, thank you again. Big round of applause. Okay. Sorry, I thought the choir was coming, but they're not. Uh, just, just kidding. She was getting me nervous over here. Uh, I again want to say it is so awesome to see God moving so widely through our kids and through your investment. It's all because of the unification we have in Christ that this happens. And so to further talk about that, let's have our superintendent, Mr. Tim Hoy, come on up. Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Tim Hoy, and I have the privilege of serving as superintendent of United Christian Academy for the last nine years, and uh, 23 years total in education. And so it has been an incredible joy. Uh, I've got to be honest with you, I was really looking forward to tonight because it's been a tough year. Uh, this year, you know, when we declared our theme that we're going to be bold, I think that kind of sent a little bit of a statement to Satan, and he's kind of thrown everything at us. But you know what? We're still standing, and we're standing strong, and I look at our amazing community. And so we are absolutely here to celebrate, and when we talk about what should the, the dinner um, reflect, I think it should reflect the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's doing through our kids and how we get to celebrate that. Um, you know, I, I support all education. I support all educators, and it is my belief that all forms of education ultimately benefit everyone. 
But having said that, I do not believe that all education are equal. And what I mean by that is that when we see all of the testings and the trials and everything else, and we see all of the brokenness and, and the despair that's happening in our culture, and we reflect and say, you know what? What is our hope? What is our foundation? It is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what we get to teach here. And ultimately, it, it is only a God-centered education, I believe, is gonna be deep enough, that's gonna be wide enough, that's going to be strong enough to stand the test that comes kids' ways. And so we rejoice and we're glad that we get to be a part of that. And we celebrate the fact that God is the center of our education, as Mayor Michael had mentioned earlier. Now, I'm here to talk about what the Eagle Vision dinner, I'm sorry, the Eagle Vision is. Uh, last year was my daughter's first uh, time to attend the Eagle Vision. And you know how kids have a very unique perspective. She went home and she said, Dad, when I heard Eagle Vision, I thought it was some kind of superpower or something. I said, do you have that? <laughs> I said, is it like your ability to see through walls or something? What is Eagle Vision exactly? I said, well, no, honey, it's really not superpower. Uh, this is what the Eagle Vision is. The Eagle Vision is an opportunity for us to do something a little extra for our kids. Parents, I know you pay tuition, and tuition is high. I get that. It's expensive. Education is expensive. But when we take your education, because we don't get any tax dollars or anything like that, after we pay our teachers, and you know that the salary is never enough, and after we pay the rent, after we pay all of the bus fees, activity fees, there's just not a whole lot left. And so I'm really grateful that tuition provides and covers the basic education, but we wanna do more for our kids than just what's basic. And so a few years ago, we started this Eagle Vision Dinner, and every year we introduce a couple of different projects that we said, hey, we wanna do a little extra for our kids, and that's what the Eagle Vision uh, is all about. So to kind of tell that story a little bit, I want to kind of show you our enrollment um, uh, in the last uh, couple of years. So when we came to this campus, uh, we started out, let's go ahead and put the next slide up, please. When we came to this campus, uh, we started out with enrollment of 350. And the Lord has just graciously blessed our school, and we've grown a little bit each year. Um, and this year, we're close to 600 students. And uh, there's some, something really neat within that story. Um, not only 600, because what we did was we, we recognized that we were becoming a little too dependent on international student population, and so we scaled that back, and our enrollment kind of dipped a little bit. And so this year, we continue to scale that back a little bit in faith. We said, but what's going to happen? We're really nervous about what's going to happen with our enrollment. And the Lord just absolutely blessed our socks off by sending us close to 600 students. Uh, the majority, far majority, is domestic students. Now, within that, this was the first year we were able to open up a third section of kindergarten. Okay? And the unique thing about that is that our vision is to be about a school of 1,000 supported by three sections going up. And so that kindergarten class, we believe, is going to be the first of uh, many to come. And it's our hope that they'll grow, in a, and, and that as they grow, all, every grade will have at least three sections. Now, what that means, board members, is that we're going to need about a classroom every single year. Okay? So about 12 classrooms uh, in the next few years to accommodate all of that growth. Now, we have plans in place already, and we've been working with the church. We have an agreement. Uh, we have some uh, con conceptual drawings for how to build some new buildings to accommodate all the growth that we're experiencing. The only thing that we're missing is a $10 million check. <laughs> so that's you. Make it out to United Christian Academy. Now, if that's not you and you need a friend to work with you on that, that's okay. We'll take two checks, too. It's a little harder, but we'll, we'll, we'll work with you on that. No, but we do. We have, uh, we have plans. We believe that God is going to continue to grow our school. And uh, Pastor Diego is, uh, and the church is working with us. And so there are things in place. And so one of the things that we did um, in faith is to start what's called a Campus Improvement Fund. And if you look at your pledge card, that's number one on the list of things that you can give towards. What is the Campus Improvement Fund? It is basically saying that as we have opportunities to grow our school, we're going to need to build more classrooms. And we're going to make, need to make some improvements. And so this fund has been started to do exactly just that. 
And so a couple years ago, we introduced a new project right here, the Eagle Vision Dinner, which was to add more classrooms. And so in the next couple of slides there, it kind of shows the progress that we started. If you go to Abundant Living Family Church and you look to the front, you see Pastor Diego up there. And then if you turn to the back, you see that some of the um, seats back there don't get used. And so, and we've been looking for space, and so we went to the church and said, you know, we need more classroom space. Are you okay with allowing us to take out some of those seats and put in classrooms? And so he agreed, uh, provided that the classroom serves both the church and the school. So when these classrooms are finished, Monday through Friday, the students will face one way, and there'll be classrooms. And then on Sundays and during services, they'll face the other way and they'll see the church and then sound will be piped into these classrooms. So we've been working with that. Uh, last dinner, we raised money for that. The total project is gonna cost about $600,000. Uh, we are on budget. We are a little bit behind on time, but we are slated to finish this in November. And uh, probably around Thanksgiving, after Thanksgiving break, our kids will hopefully will get to move into those new buildings. Um, so that will add four new classrooms, and that provides uh, opportunities, again, for us to continue to accommodate growth. One of the big focus this year has been campus safety. And uh, as you know, we love our campus. And um, it's spacious, it's big, but it's also very open. And as we're evaluating, okay, what can we do to keep our students safer? We've, um, we've increased uh, monitoring, and we've hired security uh, personnel, and we've changed some policies and those kind of things. But one of the things that we, are, we will have the opportunity to do is to build a fence uh, on this whale playground. As you go out tonight, you see the, the blue whale. That is what we call the whale playground. And some of our elementary kids play there. And it would be wonderful to have a fence around that. And so one of the projects that we're going to be doing, we're introducing to tonight, are twofold. Number one, we want to finish the classrooms. We're about $175,000 short in that one. And then we also want to go ahead and fence in that playground. We're working with the church uh, on a concept that's going to work for them and it's going to work for us. It's just going to provide a little more safety for our children, keep the balls in there, and, and keep um, unwanted traffic out of there. Again, just a sense of safety for our students. So those are the things that we're doing for the, for, um, the Eagle Vision. Um, that's what the Eagle Vision is. It's just an opportunity to do, for us to do some things extra. Uh, above and beyond tuition to help our students. Um, at United Christian Academy, we are not into auctions. We're not into a lot of fundraisings. We're not into s telling you weepy stories. We just share with you, this is our vision. And if you believe in what we do, you've seen the story of the kids, you've, seen, you've met some of our alumni, you've seen the, uh, you know, how God is using the school. And if that is something that you believe in and you want to support, we want to invite you to participate in the Eagle Vision. Um, to do that, we ask you to make a donation. If you want to make it a one-time donation, we're glad with that. For that, if you want to make it, hey, I just want to give on a monthly basis, you can do that as well. And there are three ways that you can uh, designate your gift. The first one, as I talked about, is the Campus Improvement Fund. If you give towards that, it's going to go towards the classroom, and it's going to go towards new fencing for our elementary students. Um, as well, it's going to go for any improvements uh, around campus. There's another box on there for tuition assistance. Uh, we, want, we never want money to be the reason why kids can't come to our school. And so as much as possible, we try to help families who need it. And if you, uh, that's where your heart is towards, you can give toward the tuition assistance program. Every year, we give about $250,000 to help uh, families who struggle with tuition. And then the last one is my favorite one, it's unrestricted. That just means that, hey, you use it where it's needed, and if that's where you wanna give, um, you can certainly check that box. But I'm gonna tell you right now that any gifts that we have extra, it's going to the classroom, it's going to the fencing project, because that's our area of greatest need. So again, thank you for, giving to, uh, for joining us tonight. If you feel compelled to give and participate in the Eagle Vision Dinner, we invite you to fill out this card. Our students are gonna come around and uh, collect them, and uh, we'll follow up. If you have some other ideas of how to give, you can do that as well. I want you to know that we never ask you to do anything that we ourselves are not willing to do. 
That's, just a, that's who we are, that's our philosophy. And so the staff and I, we've already presented this, um, this project to our staff, our faculty and staff, and they've already put their pledge cards, and I want them to be the first. And if you, again, if you believe in what we're doing, we invite you to be a part of it. Um, thank you for being here tonight, and uh, Lord bless you, and thank you for blessing our school. The kids will be coming around. If you want to give to the school, uh, just go ahead and hand that to them. If you want to take it home and pray about it, you can certainly do that as well. But no matter the size of the gift, or if there's any gift at all, we are so grateful for you. Thank you for making our community amazing. Thank you for keeping United Christian Academy strong. Amen?
again, thank you for sharing this evening with us, and thank you for keeping the United story continuing uh, on such a firm foundation. At this time, it is my privilege to introduce somebody who's been with the school for a long time. First, she was a parent, and then she was a board member, and for the last several years, she has been the president of the board. So please join me in welcoming President Luella Hirston. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask my husband to stay up here if he would. And I tell you, God is so amazing, so awesome, so wonderful. Thank God, he, thank God that he's not finished with us. And he is still, we're still in creation with him. And he's still working things out through us. I really want to thank all of you for coming tonight, for making this so special. I'd like for the UCA board members to please stand and if you could give them a round of applause. God is not finished with you yet. Administration, could you please stand for a round of applause? And our awesome teachers, could you stand? <laughs> and now our super amazing students, if you're not already standing, stand. <laughs> we give a shout out to our community supporters. And our amazing, absolutely amazing partnership with Abundant Family Living Church and with Pastor Diego Mesa. He gives us so much, and we are so, so thankful. Amen. I'd like to thank Rebecca and her wonderful team. I love the theme, Be Bold. Amen. In fact, when I heard about that theme, this song has resonated in my mind over and over again. I won't sing it because everybody will get up and leave, but I do <laughs> want to read the lyrics. Be bold, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Be bold, be strong, do not be afraid, do not be dismayed, walk in faith and victory. Why? Because the Lord thy God is with thee. Run through the camp, tell everybody. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Run through the camp to tell everybody to get ready. Are you ready to take the land? Are you ready to take a stand for the Lord? Be bold, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with thee. I like for you to repeat after me. I am bold. I am bold. I am strong. I am strong. For the Lord my God is with me. For the Lord my God is with me. No. No. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. I am not dismayed. I am not dismayed. Because I'm walking. Because I'm walking. In faith and victory. In faith and victory. And I'm going to keep walking. And I'm going to keep walking. In faith and victory. In faith and victory. Thank you again for an amazing evening. And as I, I'll ask you to close your head, I mean, close your eyes. Cl not your head. OK, we don't, want, we don't want that. OK. As I say the closing prayer for tonight. OK, if you could bow your heads and close your eyes. Oh, is that a little, a little better? Father God, we want to thank you for a wonderful, amazing, amazing evening. Father God, this was ordained before the beginning of time. You know what our needs are, and we thank you that in you, you have already met our needs. We just pray for abundance for everyone that's here. We pray your fondest blessings upon every family that's represented here at the school. We pray your fondest blessing for the church and for all of its members. 
We pray for the school. We pray for leadership. We pray for guidance and courage. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much again. <laughs>